Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at events. Events are very important. Uh, it's when something happens. And so we don't really do any code until something happens. When we click on it, do something. Or even when it's loaded or when it's ready, hey, then we get to, uh, then we get to use it. And there's all sorts of mouse events. Sounds will make events when they're complete, etc. So that's a really important part. As a matter of fact, that's really what makes it interactive in the first place. <laughs> Yay! So uh, let's go into examples here at the Zim site, zimjs.com. Pressed on examples, and we'll go right to the Zim intro. Wow! Zim intro, by the way, can be found on the Zim site at the bottom here in the gold bars. Intro. And we'll click on the example, and when it's ready, when the frame is ready, there's an event. So that's where we put all of our code in that ready event. Here is a very common one, a click event. Click. Hey! Another click to close that. It also could be on mouse down. Oh, we've got a mouse over there. Mouse over, mouse out. Uh, it might be on a mouse down, but I don't think it was. We get a mouse down when we start dragging. We get also what's called a press move. So we're pressing and moving, and we get a press up. CreateJS didn't give us a, a mouse up. And, and by the way, CreateJS is what gave us most of these events. Or events are also available in raw JavaScript. Uh, but CreateJS is giving us these canvas events. That's, um, that's why we use it, is it uh, has an, a great event system for us that lets us capture all of those events on the canvas. Zim has added some custom events on top of that. But So we've got three levels of events. Zim events, CreateJS events, and JavaScript events. And of course, maybe even uh, whatever JavaScript's built on uses events. Because um, CreateJS gave us a mouse down, a press move and a press up, Zim has decided, well, you know, maybe we could just call it also a press down, press move and press up. <laughs> it always bugged us for a number of years. So I think in Zimcat, we introduced a press up event, or sorry, a press down event. So this is also a press down. It's a mouse down as well. So mouse down, press down, doesn't matter. You've got press down, press move, press up. Um, you'll get keyboard events, such as key down, key up, there, the sound will have a complete event. Loading can have events to, to tell you that it is loading and you can capture how much has loaded. Uh, or if the loading is complete, uh, it's a complete event. Mm, what other types? The stage itself has some events that are sort of strangely labeled. Stage mouse move and stage mouse up, I think, are available. Probably stage mouse down as well that are on the, the so-called naked stage. If you just use a mouse down on the stage, it has to be on an object that is on the stage. I don't think we need to get into that with the basics, but uh, there you go. You've got a little bit of a story there. When things animate, you get an animation event if you turn animation events on. So sometimes events take a little bit of processing or extra processing and you might not need them. Uh, but it, when you animate with Zim, if you want, you can trigger an animation event by turning events on for animation. And then we'll tell you as the as the object is animating, it will it will dispatch, it's called dispatch an animation event. All right, well that's probably enough talking. Uh, we apply these events with the on method, uh, but Zim also provides a tap method, which is chainable, short chainable tap, and a change method. Oh, did I mention the change methods? Components provide a change method whenever they change, so that's quite common as well. All right, let's close that down. We'll go to... Let's have a quick look at the docs. I can show you where the events can be found. So in the docs here, any of the display objects will have events for you. We'll take a look at a container, for instance. If we scroll down in the container, we get a definition of the container. Here are the parameters we pass. Here are the methods. Here are the properties. And then here are the events. See the CreateJS easel docs for container events such as added. Is the, is the component or is the container um, added to a parent? It doesn't mean added to a stage, so be careful there. It's added to a parent. 
Um, if you want to know if it's added to the stage, Zim has provided an added method that will return a function when something gets added to the stage. Anyway, here is a click, very common, a double click, note the spelling of it, double click, a mouse down, a mouse out, a mouse over, a press down. So here's the one that was added by Zim that matches the press move and press up that were already available um, through CreateJS. A removed, which means it's removed from its parent, and roll out and roll over. Uh, okay, fine. Those are probably are the same as mouse over and mouse out, so I think, but I'm not sure. You can have a look at those in the CreateJS and docs. We didn't put a link to those, just do a search. What we do is we put CreateJS up here. Oh, I guess I can show you quickly. Here's CreateJS, and there's uh, Easel. JS right there, and here are the docs. And there is a container in here. Container. And here are the events for a container with their uh, definitions on them. They're pretty well. Oh, there's the rollout. And we might be able to read it's similar to a mouse out with the following differences it doesn't bubble. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Okay, um, right. This is in basics, and I'm going to close that. Oh, did that close my old browser? It did. Hey, I think that's trying to tell us something. I think it's trying to tell us, let's just get in here and start uh, start typing in some events. Uh, I was going to show you one more thing in the docs, and that was the on method. So if you looked under containers, the on method is listed there as a create.js method. Okay, so create.js provides us with the on method. And here it is, right here. So we create a frame, a new frame, and frame.on ready. If you've um, done JavaScript before and know about JavaScript's events, this is the same as add event listen, listener, like that. So that's a JavaScript way, and this will actually work here as well. Um, so what create.js has done is replaced add event listener, because it's so bloody long, replaced it with a nice short on. <laughs> it's also added uh, another couple things at the end, which, which help us, or at least one extra thing, a way to say only run once. So if we wanted this event to only run once, which probably will anyway, it's past this, which is whether it's bubbling or not, to uh, true. That would mean run or capture this event only once. And once you capture it once, that's it. So that can be handy. There's also ways to turn off events. I'll show you that though in this basics. So CreateJS added that last one there, uh, made it shorter. I'm not sure if there's any other differences between add event listener, but we're thankful for them for making that shorter. We put up with this in Flash for many years. Add event listener was there in Flash as well, because both JavaScript and ActionScript were based on ECMAScript. And that's what they uh, provided, add event listener. We do it so much, and it's three words. It's like, uh, very frustrating. OK, so uh, on reads nicely, frame.on ready, do this function. And so that's the format of it. You put the event type here as a string. All of the events are lowercase, except for the JavaScript uh, dom dom content loaded. I think I've mentioned this in another basics already. The DOM content loaded, which we don't have to worry about. It's actually built right into the, the frame dot on ready. Uh, the frame needs to wait until the canvas tag is, is there anyway. Well, it actually creates a canvas tag, so it needs to wait until body is made. So we already are, are doing a DOM content loaded inside of the frame. So you never need to look at that again when using Zim. <laughs> Yay! But anyway, they're all lowercase. So in other words, if you do um, a mouse move or something like that, or there's no pre a press move, I should say, then um, it'll be all lowercase, all one word. A mouse down, all lowercase, all one word. OK, so when it's ready, we call this arrow function like that. And in here it does. Let's, let's build something ourselves now. How about a new? circle a and we'll make this 200 and red and we will dot center it on the stage like so okay we'll have a view in browser plus and there is our circle we should be able to hit that with the mouse at some point right now we have no events on it which means oh you know it's not very interactive uh, 
we're just showing something to somebody. Okay, and that's what a lot of HTML is, is just showing something to somebody, which is important. But with interactive media, we definitely want it to be a little bit more than that. We want people to be able to do things with this. So we have added a drag, and a drag itself is not an event, but it uses a couple events. So now we can, there, there would be a mouse down to find out where we started. Like the, it has to know where the cursor starts on mouse down. It records that location. So as we drag it with the press move event, as we drag it with press move, it says, okay, well, where is the mouse now? Where, and then we'll move the circle relative to uh, where we picked it up from. And that's what gives us that. So that's some calculations that are in there. And then when we press up, we want to stop dragging. And that's why it stops dragging. <laughs> we had to do that. We coded that. CreateJS doesn't give us a drag. It, you would have had to code that with those events yourself. And uh, after doing it for a number of times, we realized, well, wow, we should make it a little bit easier for people to use. And we'll just give them a drag. And so we did. All right, uh, if we don't do a drag, um, say we just want to click on this thing, um, we should not do this. On is not chainable, so uh, well, it is chainable kind of, but okay, so here we are, we're going to apply a click event. So on click, we will call this arrow function, AF enter. And what that does is it makes our arrow function in there for us, like that. And we put whatever we want to do in the event inside of here. Wow, that's some tab that it's got going on. <laughs> this way, like six, six character tab. Did I make a mistake? Sometimes if tabs don't work, um, then it means that, I, that you've made a mistake in your... So up here, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, um, and we can do something in here. Now, why don't we uh, make the circle? Well, we can't quite make the circle. We could make the circle disappear if we use an event object, but why don't we get to that in just a, a little bit. Instead, uh, I will just zog hello or click. There we go. This will work. And we'll refresh here, and I'll click on it. And indeed, if I open this up, it says click. Yay! So the event worked. The problem is it we don't have access to the circle anymore. Often what we would do is we would say const circle is equal to that. And then you would think, oh, great, we've assigned the circle to here. And therefore, I could, if I wanted to, say circle.remove from. Like we're going to click it, and we're going to remove the circle, and we'll do a stage.update here to make sure that the stage updates once we click it. You ready? This should be fine, but uh, it's giving us an error. Circle.remove from is not a function. Huh. Well, how about that? The reason for it is center returns the object because it's chainable. We made it chainable. On does not return the object. On, the CreateJS on method, returns an ID for that event so that we can turn that event off if we need to. So it, it works if we chain on onto the end. It seems to work, but it's really not working. So the, the general rule of thumb is do not chain the on method. So we have to put it down here on another line, another statement, that is. Okay, so we end this statement and then we say circle dot on click. That allows the circle object to actually be assigned to the, the variable circle. Okay, because center returns the object, therefore the object is being placed into there. On does not. Now that's that's just JavaScript, that's not Zim, it's it's chaining, how chaining works. Okay. Um, so anyway, there we go. Let's test it out now. We refresh here. And we click, and it's gone. A note that we don't have a cursor. So just adding an event doesn't automatically add a cursor for us. So that means we would probably want to chain on dot .cur. Dot .cur is a chainable method that um, adjusts the cursor property of the object. So CreateJS gave us a cursor property of the object, uh, which would basically be the same as this, circle dot cursor 
equals pointer like that. So that's what we got with create.js, but we've added the short little chainable dot cur because that's just a bit easier for us. And when we refresh here, now we get the finger showing. <laughs> hey, are you giving me the finger? <laughs> it's the right finger. Well, actually the left finger. Uh, well, <laughs> on the right hand, it would be the left finger. <laughs> okay, so uh, there you go. There's an event. Hey, it's interactive. We're doing something. We're letting the user do something. That's wonderful with this click event. So that's basically how you apply the events. The other thing you could do is collect the event object in here. I think we've talked about that before. We usually collect it as E. It's extra information about the event. And then if we wanted to, we could have said E.target here and not even worried about whether it was the circle or not. Just whatever was clicked on, remove it and update the stage. And we refresh here and that works in the same way. E dot. And you remember current target as well. Current target means whatever the event was put on, remove it. Uh, you recall the differences there when we looked at tile. Give me um, const tile is equal to a, well, I guess we can just do it like this. No, const tile is equal to a new tile. I think that just make and dot center. I think that makes a tile of like three by three circles anyway. And then we'll replace it with tile there just to take you through this quickly. So if we say e.target, it's whatever object in the tile was clicked on. So whatever was clicked on, e.target. Let's try. So we refresh here, and when we click, there you go, whichever one we're clicking on gets removed. But if it's e current target, like so, and we refresh, then it's whatever the event was put on, which is the whole tile will get removed. And indeed, the whole tile gets removed at that point. OK, so that's a little bit about your event objects there. Uh, what else might we be interested in? Mm, let's go back to the target. I'd like to take you through the different types of events as well, but maybe before I go through the different types of events, let's just finish off some of the things about the event object. And okay, so there's e.target.remove from once again. So we're doing that. Let's say after we do two of these, or well, let's just do it after the first one. So we're going to remove the event object, but watch this. We can also say e clear I think it is so e is the event object and if we say dot clear on it that means we'll clear the event it won't it won't go anymore so this will allow us to remove one oh no remove sorry remove right, my apologies so we'll remove the event I click on one and now if I click on the others they don't uh, the event doesn't work because we've removed it Another way to do that is what's handy with the on method is we can say null here and true. This is added by create.js. This, uh, this parameter, I think it's the last parameter in the on method. Here's the first parameter. There's the second. This one says whether it's bubbling or not. And that's not really a Zim basics. That's more like a, uh, an advanced events thing. Uh, bubbling goes up and down. Um, stacked like if think containers basically goes up and down containers or is it even up and down no it's not containers it's whatever is on top of one another I, I can't remember for sure uh anyway you don't need to know that but this one says remove it after it's gone once so this will do the same thing i'll click one of them and then it won't be there anymore so now i'm clicking these other ones so that's one way to do it. You could do this with a conditional. Say, hey, if it's the second or third time I've clicked, or if I've clicked the right one, then remove. So uh, you could dynamically remove the event that way. Um, you can remove it after the first time just by doing that. And you can also remove the event later. For instance, we could put a timeout in here, timeout. And we'll do a timeout of three seconds. We'll call this arrow function right here. And then what we'll do is we will remove this click event. So to remove the click event, we have to store it in a variable, const uh, e 
event is equal to, maybe I better not use event. I think it'd be okay. EV, we'll call it. All right, so um, what we're doing is we're taking the result of the on method that will give us an ID right here, call it EV. And then later, what we do is copy this down in the timeout tile dot off. And we're going to turn off the click event that has this ID, uh, EV, like that. So that's how you remove an event. So after three seconds, we're going to turn off that click event based on its ID there. So we're not, uh, I'm going to try clicking a couple of them. And then after three seconds, we'll find that we can't click anymore. So we refresh that. Here I go, I click a few. And it, oh, there, we're at three seconds. It's turned off. The event has been removed. Okay. So um, that's a little bit about event manipulation. So let's talk more about the different types of events then. Why don't we leave this example sitting here? Maybe I'll comment it all out so that you can refer to it if you find this file again at some point. And we'll go back to our circle. So there's our circle. We're giving it, we're centering it, and we're giving it a cursor. Refresh here. Now it has a cursor, but it doesn't do anything if I click on it. What else can it do? Well, why don't we try an on mouse over and we'll change its color. So we can say circle dot on mouse over, call this arrow function. And in that function, we can say circle dot color equals green and stage dot update. Like that. Ready? Hey, and there's a mouse out. Back to red. Hmm. All right, that's that's quite common. And so what we've provided in Zim is circle dot hub green. I think that works. Oops, wrong green. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Circle.hub, green. Okay. And as a matter of fact, we don't even need the cur at that point. It will assume that you're you're wanting to indicate something with the cursor. Nice, huh? Uh, but that's the mouse over, mouse out that you can do at your leisure. There's also a mouse down, so we won't bother hubbing. We will say, uh, oh, by the way, with hub, uh, you can adjust the scale too. So if we said 0.5, well, that might be weird. 0.8, we'll try it, see what happens. Oh, that's the alpha, <laughs> right. Sorry, I forgot. So that's, that's the alpha. So if we hover over it, we can adjust the alpha. Usually we do it the other way. We might put one there and we might say circle.alp. Oh, and by the way, uh, we're doing this down here, but this is all chainable. So we wouldn't even need to have a circle at all to make that work. And we can pop right up here and change the alpha to 0.5, say like that. No need for a circle down there. We refresh here, and now the circle's alpha is 0.5, but when we roll over it, it it's like a highlight in a sense. So 0.8 or 0.7. Hey. Okay. You can do scale as well on hub. I think that's the next parameter. So you might have to go a null here and try a scale. I don't know. Maybe you don't do a scale. I can't remember. And then this wouldn't be alpha at all. It would be ska. Uh, 0.8. No, that didn't do it. I, I can't remember. You'll have to look into that. But anyway, hub works automatically with color. So if you put in a string here, that well, a color string, or what maybe converts to a color number, I can't remember. Anyway, if you put a string in here, then it's going to assume that you want color. 
green. So even if we have the scale down or the ELP down, th those are independent. Where if we set alpha to 0.8, it's not going to adjust the alpha, it just adjusts the color. Okay, like that. Uh, let's see, what else might we want to show? We showed you a mouse over, mouse out. Uh, let's talk about the click just a little bit more. So I won't bother with those. And as a matter of fact, well, why don't we keep that being one to match the alpha thing. And we'll do this one dot. Um, or did we do the on? We did an on click, yeah. So let's try the on. Can't chain an on, but I'll put it down here. Circle dot on. Uh, mouse down, comma, call this function AF. And on mouse down, we will say circle dot animate. Circle dot animate to um, scale of zero in one second. Okay, you ready? So as soon as I mouse down on that, it wasn't even a mouse up. I pressed down, I was still holding the, the mouse down, and off it's, off it's gone. So that's a mouse down. So there's a mouse down as well. Um, if you want to do a click event, remember how we had done click events down here, uh, somewhere, the click events down there, you can do a short chainable dot tap, like that. And inside the tap, you just put the function, an arrow function. So the tap is assuming a mouse, or like a click. Uh, it's like a click. A click in JavaScript is a bit strange. A click means basically a mouse up. That's why we have no mouse up, is because click is mouse up. You press down on something, it's, like it's got to be on it, but then when you mouse up, I don't even know if it has to be on it anymore. It's just, oh yeah, it does. I think it's still got to be on it, but it could be in a different place and it could be in a different time, like much longer. I could click and hold down on it. So I could click and hold down, hold down, hold down, hold down, and then up. And when it goes up, that's called a click. Well, that's a really slow click. <laughs> in JavaScript. It's like, okay, if you say so. So sometimes we don't want people to be able to wait that long. We want that, we want to just know it's a tap. So what we did is made a short chainable tap that is a mouse up basically or a click. Uh, and yet it, it requires you to um, mouse up in a certain area that's close to where you mouse down and within a certain time. So that's up to you to set those two things. We have a default. And you can have a look into that, the, their, the next two parameters in here. But anyway, just by default, here's our tap. And basically, it's a nice, simple, uh, let's make this go to um, Zim. So there it is. It's going to go to Zim when we um, tap that. Ready? Tap gives us note that we have no cursor. Tap will give us a cursor automatically, and I tap, and off it goes to Zim. Okay, tap, off it goes to Zim. If I hold down too long, let's see if it still goes to Zim. It does. So I think what we did is decided that the, the timing of it wasn't so important, but watch, I press down here, and I moved over here, and I let go, and it didn't tap. Press here, moved over here, let go, and it doesn't tap. That actually becomes quite important with, say, selecting something in a list as you move it. Uh, here's a Zim list. Okay. So watch what would happen. As I scroll on the list, if I used a, a click, it would activate the list every time I moused up. So I might select six and drag it down and it would activate the list, but I didn't actually select the list. That time I did. <laughs> Do you see the difference? So the click would be going every time I let the mouse up, whereas a tap says, okay, only go if the mouse down and mouse up are within the same area. So that's very important with um, activating a, a list. There's also the change event, which you could use for that if you so desired. Okay, so that's the Zim tap being short chainable. Let's just undo that. 
All right, let's take a little breath here and figure out uh, if we've got them all. Why don't you go over them in your head a little bit, the different types of events that we've been looking at. Ah, well, I have a drink of water. <laughs> so mouse down or press down, uh, by the way. There's the mouse over, mouse out, there's the click, there's a tap, which is um, a short chainable. Isn't that nice? So that allows us to act. We don't even need to store the circle anymore at that point. We could have just said new circle dot center dot tap and that's, uh, that would work. Mind you, if we did any of these other ones, we'd have to bring back the, the variable name. Uh, key, keyboard events. We didn't talk about keyboard events, so that is like so frame dot on key down uh, create.js didn't give us uh, a key event you had to go to the windows to get that so you would ask the window or the document i can't remember which one and there's another thing i, I can never remember which one had the key down but either the window or the document and then you would use add event listener so it's sort of like jarring to have to go back to a doc you know the the plain JavaScript's add event listener to get a key down. So we tucked it onto the frame. Frame dot on key down is how you can access with the on method a key down event. And here we could say circle dot color equals uh, rand, mm, let's shuffle, I guess. We'll shuffle this Uh, array of colors, red, oh, not red, green, purple, blue, like that. And then we'll say, give me the zero element of that. So we're shuffling this array and getting the first element of it. That's a nice, easy way to get a random color. Uh, but if you wanted to with Zim Basics, you could also use a series, may as well throw a series in here. And we could say const colors is equal to a series, which is uh, these colors. You can pass an array into a series if you so desire, if you happen to have an array, but otherwise you can also pass in the parameters. So that's a series, it's a little bit different. This would be uh, random. We're going to set the color. I'll leave you a copy of that just in case you want it. We're going to set the color in series this time, colors. So each time we key down, we set the color, we run colors. That's how you can activate the series. It's one way to activate a series. Or if you pass it into a Zim V value, a, a parameter that accepts Zim V values, uh, such as the circle itself, when you make the circle, if you passed, um, instead of red there, you passed just the color series into that. Every time the circle gets made, it would be the next color in the series. We're only making the circle once, so that's, yeah, but if it were in a loop or something like that. Anyway, here it is. We're in a key down. Uh, there we are saying set the color of the circle to the next color in this series. We might want to add red onto there, and that way we'll get red again. And we refresh here. And what are we doing? Oh, yeah, we're keying down. So I hit here, and I hit the space bar. That should be a key down, and I don't see anything happening. So uh, what happened? Did we update the stage? Is that it? Yeah, okay, so we forgot the stage.update. So in Zim Tips, let's have a look. We have this funny tips, if we had a browser. Peekies, here's a browser. Now let's get that browser back. Um, in Zim Tips, down below here, Zim Tips, there's a funny one that says, missing. <laughs> I don't know. Tips were eventually, uh, initially when things went wrong, we had some tips, but then tips became sort of this all-encompassing, we'll tell you about anything uh, we think you should know about. But anyway, there's that one called missing. Missing. When you're coding, sometimes things don't show up. Here's reasons why that might not happen. The internet's down, you have an error, check the console. Uh, you might have an, uh, an image or sound, and there could be an a cores error, you forgot to add the object to the stage, you forgot to update the stage, and there it is. So 
uh, you forgot, well, actually, you forgot to put the stage uh, dot update in the end of an event function. And that's exactly what we've done. We've got the key event, and we have a stage dot update here. There it is. So I didn't forget that one. So it showed up to start, but the change didn't show because we forgot the stage dot update there. Like that. Okay, let's try her now. Um, it's red. I hit the space bar. It's green, purple, blue, red, pur green, purple, blue. And there they are. So I'm hitting the space bar. That's any key, as a matter of fact. But we can collect the event object here, which means we don't need the round brackets. And then we can find out um, uh, the key code. So let's log the key code. Zog. We'll zog uh, pink, the key code, e dot key code. So that's how you find out what is the code for the key that was pressed. So if I refresh here and I press the, uh, we're having a look here, uh, I got to pr press there, I hit the space bar. The space bar is 32. Something like the C key for color is 67. So if we wanted to, we can now say if e dot key code double equals what number 32 that's the space bar it's a little bit more popular then we're going to say circle dot color equals colors we'll update it at that point and you could do anything you wanted to with these these keys you could make something go faster or slower or turn left turn right of course if you're using uh, key codes to move things about then check the zim motion controller. We should probably do a Zim Basics on the motion controller itself. It's very important. So we had uh, a Zim Basics coming up for blobs and squiggles. So I think that will be the next one we do. And then we can do the motion controller after that. Sounds good. So if the key code is 32, that's a space bar. I usually do this space bar like that. I put which key that is. So if I'm looking at the code later, <laughs> I know. All right, are you ready to try the space bar this time? So did we save that? Yep, we refresh. And now if I hit the R key, it says 82. It told me 82, wait just a minute, am I still? Yeah, I'm still zogging. Okay, but I'm going to hit the uh, space bar. Yay, space bar does it, the G key doesn't. Only the space bar is changing our colors. Uh, another thing with key downs is you have to make sure that the the focus is on the stage, so you can't you can't key down right away until somebody puts focus like or until the user clicks on the stage. So you might want to have like a start button or something like that, which makes sure that they click on the stage before you try and capture their key press. And that's just so that we don't um, capture people's passwords or something when they're not even they haven't put focus on the app. And they're they're who knows where else they're somewhere else, and we're capturing their key codes. So it's a protective measure. Okay, so that's great. We've seen keyboard events. We've seen most of the mouse events, I believe. We've seen how to remove an event. We've talked about the event objects, e.target.currentTarget. Uh, how about um, just quickly some stage events, because that can be a little bit confusing. Uh, stage dot on. Um, let's try mouse up. I'm not sure if there's a mouse up. I think there is. And we'll go arrow function like that. And then what can we do? We can say circle dot remove from like so. And don't forget our stage dot update. Like so. Okay. Let's see if it, the stage mouse done. Oh, what are we doing when we click on a circle these days? Tapping, we're going. Okay. Un comment out that. Okay, so that didn't seem to trigger the the mouse up. So maybe there isn't a stage mouse up. Um, let's try a press up. Yeah, okay. So there is. it appears that there's no mouse ups at all, which is fine. Um, there is a press up on the stage, but watch what happens now if I press on the stage. So this gray stuff's on the stage and I'm pressing up on it. Nothing is happening. So in other words, the press up is on the stage, yes, but on something that is on the stage. 
So this circle is on the stage, therefore I can press up on it. If I had another shape here, a rectangle, I could press on that and that would count as a press up on the stage. So the question is, how do you find it on the actual empty stage itself? And that is probably stage press up. I don't know, I never never need to do that, um, but I do have to do a, mouse, a, a stage mouse down and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. No, that didn't do it. So now let's <laughs> try the mouse up here. The <laughs> stage mouse up. Okay, so we have it here. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I knew there was a mouse. So there is no plain mouse up on the stage, but there is actually a stage mouse up. So CreateJS gives us two events. One is called stage mouse down, which is what I use. I, know, I, I knew there was a stage mouse down. I use that fairly often. That just means we've moused down on the stage somewhere. On, on the stage itself or on something that's on the stage. So it could be on an object on the stage or on the empty stage itself, stage mouse down. And that's the kind of funny one because it's stage dot on stage mouse down. It's kind of like, really? That's because stage dot mouse down is only on an object on the stage. No, I thought it was. Oh, that was the press up that did it. Hang on. <laughs> confusing uh, refresh here there I am mousing down on the stage apparently doesn't work mouse down on something on the stage works stage mouse down means yes I can mouse down there I go I mouse down on the stage anywhere it doesn't have to be on an object on the stage okay so that's what um, one would normally use is that just to make sure that you've clicked on the stage and then I can activate some sound or I can uh, do whatever I want. It's uh, you know a relatively common one. I don't use that one. That's why I couldn't remember if there even was one. Uh, and there is. So we could add two, add two if we wanted to. And let's have a look and see what that does. So when we mouse down, it's gonna remove the circle. When we mouse up, it's gonna add the circle. Okay, down, up, down, up, down up, down, up, down, up. There we go, neat. Okay, let's, uh, that's the stage stuff talked about. Yay, there are events for sounds, but I don't know, I'm not gonna show you that. That's uh, read, read sounds in the doc, and it will show you how to find out an event that uh, when a sound is complete. Uh, there are events in animation. We usually use callback in animation though. Let's go to the docs to take a look at that. So here, back on the Zim site, we go to the docs. We'll look up animate. And here's animation. And it's these guys right here. So when something loops, there is a, a loop call right there. Well, here's a call. So when the animation is done, call that function. So that will tell us when the animation is done. We just put the function in there. So we don't really apply an event saying uh, when the animation is complete, call this event, okay, on, on whatever the object that the animate was put on. Remember that animate itself is not the object. Animate gets put on an object. Anytime that we're using the on method, we're putting it on the object. So it's kind of awkward to put an event on the object, say animate done or complete, or something like that on the object, but we might not even be animating the object. So it's sort of like, well, wait a minute, how are you putting an event to capture an animation? You don't even have an animation. So if you've got an animation, the events are handled with callbacks right in the animate, and that just makes it a little bit easier. So call that function when it's finished, and we've got all sorts of things too, like when we loop. So here's uh, a loop call. Whenever it loops, call the function. Whenever it rewinds, call the function. Whenever it waits, call the function, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When there's a sequence of things, call, call the function when the sequence finishes, blah, blah, blah. If you want the to know uh, a function as it's animating, oh, that's one thing we didn't look at is the press moves. We should look at press moves, move events. We'll go look at that when we come back in there. Uh, but there's an events parameter here somewhere in here. Do you see events? So events, if we set events true, that means we can capture an animation event constantly. And if we scroll down here to the bottom of the events, blah, 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 or sorry, bottom of animate, 
the event stuff is always at the bottom, the very bottom of the code here. So events, the Zim animate will add an animation event to the target if the events parameter is turned on. Okay, so that will run all the time while it's animating, and as soon as it stops animating, then it won't run anymore. All right, press move. So we should look at the press move events here. I was, I was trying to go through all the different events, make sure we get them all. Nearly forgot the press move event, which is uh, quite a common event. So let's not do, okay, we removed our stage stuff. Great. We have a key down. Oh, that's fine. We can leave that. And we have a circle. Okay. Are we dragging the circle? Uh, no. So we'll bring back the drag of the circle. Dot drag. And then if we want to check on something as we're dragging, so as we pick this up, let's check on it. For instance, if we wanted to find out if the circle is hitting something else, uh, or say that our circle went too high. Um, let's let's try and test to find out if the circle is off the stage like that. Uh, we we can, by the way, in the drag we can put a, a boundary on there if we just say stage <laughs> or date. <laughs> we just say stage. Now as we drag, it's stuck on the stage like that. So, uh, but there might be a time when. Um, well, who, who knows what. As, as we're dragging, we might want to find out something. So let's just do that. We will say circle dot on press move. So that's what that event is called. We call this arrow function. And in here, if we zog, uh, we can't really see it, but maybe one thing we could do is how about we say circle Oh, goodness, circle dot ska, mm, scale times equals uh, 1.01. .01. So what this is going to do is as we're dragging, it's going to just get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger as we drag. You ready? <laughs> got, got, got bigger quite quickly. It's <laughs> zero, zero, one. <laughs> Okay, because this is happening all the time. If we were to log that in the console, it's going as fast as the ticker is, going as fast as our frame rate, basically. As we're pressing, as we move it, can you see that? It's slightly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're going, no. So you could make a little game of it if you wanted it to go smaller and smaller and smaller. 0.999. And that would go smaller and smaller and smaller. Like, no, don't go away. Okay, so anytime you want to check something or do something as you're dragging, and that's often the case when you, you're hitting something. Say I'm dragging around, I want to erase something or throw it in the garbage. Actually, throwing it in the garbage would be probably on press up. Is it hitting the garbage can? Anyway, there it is, getting smaller and smaller as we drag it. You can do a test in there as well. So uh, if circle dot y is less than I remember the circles um, registration point is in the middle there so if the y position of the circle is less than um, circle dot radius then we can do something uh, we can um, turn the circle I was going to say red dot color equals um, purple or black. How about black? All right. And uh, you can do an else if you want, although it's not the um, it's not the most efficient. But else circle dot color equals red. There we go. So you ready? You know what this is going to do? Black, red. It's like a warning. So here is the x or the y position is right in the center of the circle. So once we get to this point, basically the y position, you see how it's the radius? So if the y position is less than the radius of the circle, that means we put the circle off the top. Otherwise, it's not, and we bring it back to being red. But it's doing this test constantly and constantly resetting the circle. Possibly what you might want to do is something like, you just have to be careful. 
and circle.color is not equal to already to black. Otherwise, it's resetting. Anyway, no, no big deal. That's, that's basic coding logic that we're dealing in here. We're just wanting to show the press move event at the moment. Yay, I'm taking a big sigh. I think that means that I've probably had enough, and I think you've probably had enough of events as well. Wow. Yay! Good job if you're still here. Remember, you don't have to watch these things all at one sitting. You can put it on pause and go get a cookie. I didn't even get to go get a cookie. I did get a nice drink of water. Nice to see you here in these Zim Basics. And if you have a request for any Zim Basics, you're welcome to give a shout out at zimjs.com slash slack. So let's go to the Zim site here. I'm going to hit top, go back to Zim. And down here to the bottom in the footer, here is the Slack link right there. There's the Discord link in either place. You're welcome to talk to us or leave a message on the YouTube video, this video, the very video that you're watching. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, from Pragma and Dr. Abstract and our little cat, Ow Me, which is meow, but Ow Me is our cat. Uh, you are, are always welcome to ask us questions, talk to us in Zim. We'd love to hear. Ciao. Have a great day or night.